Hey everyone, it's been a 007 back for another 10 minute movie review. And today I'm going to talk to you about Marielle Heller's new film, Night Bitch, starring Amy Adams. Now, Marielle Heller is a director that you might have heard of from her last film, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, about Mr. Rogers. And this is her next movie, and it's really good for about 60 minutes of its 98 minute running time. Um, and then kind of goes a bit Cameron Crow <laughs> and a bit twee and wraps everything up in a nice bow, which is really, really frustrating because those first 60 minutes are spiky and interesting because Amy Adams always plays these very, very sweet, pretty, goody two-shoes characters, not least in Enchanted. <laughs> Um, and here she's playing someone who's a new mom and she's tired and she's harassed and she's a bit overweight and she has a weird relationship with her own body and her emotions. And, you know, she's given up a career as an artist in the city to be a suburban stay at home mum. And it's clear that she loves her little toddler, but it's also clear that she is not doing OK. And I just love that Amy Adams threw herself into this role. It's a really good performance. But sadly, it's a better performance than it is a film. So as I said, for the first kind of hour-ish of its running time, the film has the following messages. Giving birth is physically savage. <laughs> Transitioning from being an urban career woman to a suburban stay-at-home mom is emotionally savage. And your still-at-work husband is probably going to have trouble empathizing with all of this. As messages go, this is not rocket science or particularly new, but in Amy Adams' hands, it really is compelling and playing against type. I think what's really lovely about this film, and it's based on a book, so maybe this is the same there, is that in trying to deal with, I'm not sure if it's postnatal depression as much as just postnatal frustration, um, the Amy Adams character starts fantasizing that she is a wolf and that she can go running with dogs at night and achieve a level of animalistic expression and freedom that she doesn't have in her daily life and it's a flight of fantasy and a concept that I think has a lot of potential if only the director hadn't bottled it and shown a complete lack of courage and conviction in following it through because the film does bottle it and you get this moment of kind of freedom and demanding what she needs in her real life and then the message of the final kind of 30 or 40 minutes of the film seems to be, oh, well, actually being a single mom and mounting an art exhibition is, in fact, super easy. And a dickhead husband can suddenly become super supportive and have a moment of enlightenment and redemption. And one can be super happy and have it all in suburban William Sonoma uber design bliss. <laughs> I was just like, what just happened here? What was a handbrake turn that just occurred in this movie? So... I really have to lay the blame. Well, I'm not sure. Is it Marielle Heller? Is it the author of the novel? But there's a really sort of milk toast approach, both to the flights of fantasy and, you know, the teasing little gesture towards body horror that is never followed through on and the messaging at the back end of this movie. It's so trite. It's so, oh, just betrays everything that has come before. And I also felt that for a single issue movie, that isn't courageous. It probably is about 20 minutes too long. Still, if you've seen this film, let me know if you agree or disagree with my take. It's such a shame to be down on a film that stars Amy Adams, but there it is. Night Bitch is rated R. I'm not sure why it's rated R because like, it's so milk-toast and has a 98-minute running time. It played the Toronto and London Film Festivals. It opens in the USA on December 6th but it doesn't yet have a UK release date. I want to sort of match this film up with Sister Midnight, which I also watched at the London Film Festival, actually the night before I saw Night Bitch. And it's fascinating because there is some thematic commonality, but my goodness, Sister Midnight has far more creativity, far more courage, and makes for a far more compelling watch. So Sister Midnight is a strange, weird, mordantly funny Indian art house film written and directed by Karan Kandari. And I have to say, I'd never seen any of his films before, but I will 100% be seeking them out now on the back of this movie. 
The film stars Radhika Apte, who is very famous as an Indian actress, and she stars in the sort of parallel role to Amy Adams as a young bride called Uma, who, when the movie opens, she's just got married, she's had an arranged marriage, and she's on a train going to the big city, and she spends her first days in this sort of claustrophobic small shack with her rather shy and bewildered husband. And it turns out they did actually meet each other briefly um, some years ago. So it's not a complete sort of arranged marriage where you've never met each other, but still it's incredibly awkward and feckless. And, you know, the young couple are about as successful as, at coupling as the King and Queen and Marie Antoinette. Um, and furthermore, Uma is absolutely unsuited to being a housewife. She does not have to know how to cook or clean or keep a house. But anyway, her husband goes off to work every day and she's stuck at home. And a bit like the Amy Adams character in Night Bitch, she's really bored and frustrated. She actually takes a job as a night cleaner far away from home just to, I think, have something to do and to get away at night. And it's interesting that for both of these frustrated housewives, escaping into the nighttime is a place where they can feel free and constrained and that both of them end up expressing their frustration through animalistic urges. Um, and I'm going to not spoil the form in which that takes place in Sister Midnight because it is so unbelievably cool. A bit like with the Amy Adams role in Night Bitch, it's not entirely clear when Sister Midnight takes a turn into surreal fantasy. But I think it's about sort of half an hour into the movie, which is also pretty similar. And it's also fascinating that both of these frustrated women, one of the symptoms of that fantasy um, escape is through their relationship with food. So in the case of Uma, she can't keep down food and she feels therefore very tired and very weak. She starts becoming very sensitive to sunlight, if you can see where I'm going with this. And it's really hilariously drawn. And unlike the Marielle Heller film, this one has a real visual style to it. It has the kind of deliberate framing and production design of a Wes Anderson film. A lot of its laconic, mordant, patient tone reminded me of like Jim Jarmusch movies in the best of ways. But really, it's it's a creation all of itself. Garan Gandhari definitely has a unique voice in world cinema. So the film works on one level as just a really funny film. But I think that what raises it above that is the fact that it is a feminist movie. Because Uma does find companionship and solidarity from her fellow women, whether her best friend Sheetal, who lives next door and teaches her how to cook, or the local hijra. Um, the message of this film is that men are simple fools, society is full of bigots, but there is solace in sisterhood and self-acceptance. And I think that that was the message I was missing in Night Bitch. I never felt that self-acceptance. There was some solace in sisterhood in the end, but it felt cheaply earned. Whereas here, it's actually really moving and has a real emotional payoff. I want to say that I loved everything about this film, Sister Midnight, from its Western and Indian needle drops to the precise framing and camera movements, its sparse script and its hilarious and fearless lead performance from Radhika Apta. But most of all, I just want to praise Karan Kandari for writing a script that absolutely has the courage of its convictions, that follows its high concept um, of a woman who is frustrated by societal norms and wants to escape through to its logical conclusion and really has the most wonderful payoff. So I know it's going to be much, much harder to find Sister Midnight, but I hope you can somehow and that you give this movie a chance. It has a running time of 110 minutes. It played the Cannes Directors Fortnight earlier this year and the BFI London Film Festival and does not sadly yet have a commercial release date, but I really hope it gets one. If you manage to catch Sister Midnight, uh, probably much easier to watch Night Bitch, though less rewarding, please feel free to leave a comment on the blog at beena007.com or a comment on the YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.